terrorism is technically referred to as asymmetrical warfare. That is the way a weak, powerful organization can wound, and as we found on September 11th, wound profoundly uh, an entity that is, in conventional terms, profoundly more powerful uh, than it is. Um, and I would make two observations about that. First is that Islamic fundamentalism, which is at the heart of uh, the kind of terrorism that we're wrestling with and being challenged by, is basically a medieval phenomenon. And I think we don't take enough mind of that. We don't pay enough attention to that. Uh, and I would say by contrast that it's virtually impossible to overestimate the importance of the Reformation in the creation of modern Europe. Because in medieval Europe, remember in the Thirty Years' War, they killed a third of the population. Compromise was illegitimate. If you and I had different views, then my only option was to kill you. The, the notion of, comp particularly on things which were faith related, the idea of compromise was literally not legitimate. And it wasn't until the Reformation, some people say it was the Enlightenment, I don't think that's right, I think it was the Reformation that made the change. Compromise became an acceptable concept. What happened then was the Enlightenment and then the emergence of, of modern Europe. Well, Islam has not had a reformation. It is, in the terms that I'm describing it, a medieval concept. Our instinct is to try to find compromises, try to find some halfway ground that we can negotiate out uh, a resolution to the problems. The difficulty with that is it presupposes that on the other side, that compromise is viewed as legitimate. So I think in many cases, our instinct of how we go about trying to find solutions is simply not that it's wrong, but it's not applicable or not useful or not productive uh, in dealing with the kind of circumstance that we deal with. The second point I would make on this is that we tend to get preoccupied with the tactical dimensions of issues, and we lose sight of the strategic import. And often it is the strategic dimension that is by far the more important. Um, let's see if I can give you an illustration. Most of the news is preoccupied with tactical issues, immediate, near-term issues. I would even argue that the capture of Saddam Hussein is fundamentally a, a tactical issue. It's not a, not a strategic matter. And uh, see if I can do a shorthand for this. If, if people who pay a lot of time and attention to the issues of terrorism disagree broadly, many different points of view. There's one thing on which everyone whom I have met or had anything to do with, who's dealt with this field of terrorism, agrees on, is that you cannot be successful if you are exclusively defensive. You cannot be successful by filing, following just a defensive posture. Uh, you cannot cede the strategic initiative uh, to the opponent. You can never protect yourself. You cannot succeed. You have to take the initiative. 